So it's been a while since I've done a collection video of any sorts, and I was trying to think like, what consoles haven't I done one for? Which I mean, there is still a lot, but one that would be interesting to most people, and one that I see a lot of people still do even to this day, are 3DS collection videos. However, my 3DS collection is not... It's not super impressive, if I'm being completely honest. When the 3DS came out, I was right in that transitional point between high school and early college, so I was real broke. I was really, really broke. It was not something that I was going to be able to afford a lot of things for. I was very fortunate to get my 3DS at some point in time, but it took a really long time for my collection at that point in time to really kind of take off. But I think that's kind of what makes it even more special. I think seeing these collection videos, especially when they're for consoles from different times of your life, is really, really interesting. So I decided, hey, let's go ahead, let's do the 3DS collection, and just I'll show you what I got, basically. This is my first video that I'm recording. I don't know if this will be the first video posted since my kind of like little break, but it definitely, it feels very, very strange to be back here, so. Hopefully I'm doing okay. Hi everybody, my name's Alex, aka Quality, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. So as I said, being a pretty broke high school or early college kid, I didn't really have a lot to get for my 3DS. I know so many people that have multiple 3DSs, but I simply have my little one. And I had wanted a 3DS so, so badly, mainly because that was the point of my like younger video game years where I was really, really getting into it. I'd always loved video games, of course. I've talked about my nostalgia to like endless extents on this channel, but that was the point where like just something turned on in my brain and I was like, I love video games. I need to have all the video games. I need to be up to date on all the video game stuff. It really started in like the DS Wii era, kind of end of the GameCube era. But once we got to here, especially with the Wii U, which that, that, Someday I'll do a whole Wii U retrospective collection video, probably. Not today, not today. But once we got to the 3DS and Wii U point, I was obsessed and I wanted everything, but didn't have the funds to have everything. So I was unfortunately not able to get a 3DS right when it came out. It was just way too expensive. I think that's something a lot of people experienced. Thus, when they dropped the price, it was a little bit easier to get a hold of. But I still wanted to hold out because I knew a special color was coming and I don't know why I went with this color because I've never, until my 3DS, I never had any like, I never had any other electronic in this color, like ever. So it was very, very strange. But I wanted to wait for the flame red 3DS. I love this thing. It's beautiful. It's so shiny. Um, well, actually mine's pretty scratched up, but it's so shiny. I love it. For some reason, the blue and the black ones, oh, the screen's a little dusty, whoops. When the blue and the black ones came out initially, I just wasn't super impressed because I knew a lot of people were going to get the blue one and I was like, I don't want the blue one. I want to be unique. And so I kind of also wanted to wait until the red one came out that I begged and begged and begged. And it was really cute. My mom actually hid this in the Christmas tree and I had to find it the Christmas I got my 3DS. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, I only have one 3DS. I would really, really love to get a new XL at some point in time. Just honestly, mainly for the comfort of my hands. This thing is very small. It's very, very small. And my carpal tunnel does not like when I play on the 3DS. So I would really like to eventually get like a new 3DS XL or even a 2DS XL. The problem is they're so expensive now because people kind of have that nostalgia they really went up in price after you know the eShop closed and i mean basically when the 3ds life cycle really ended they've gone up in price so much people are modding them which is making them more expensive and it's just it's really hard to try to buy one right now but i'm not giving up hope someday i would really like to get one of the animal crossing ones or just just something, just one of the XLs, that's all I want. <laughs> so with this 3DS came your normal 3DS accessories, the AR cards, uh, the little like carriage thing, the charging carriage, cradle, I think they called it the cradle, I can't remember. Uh, came with that, cord, stylus, all of that. But aside from what really came with it, I didn't really get any other accessories. The only case I ever had for this 3DS was just this Nintendo red one um, in it. Let's see. There's not much. There's not much in it. There's not a lot of space in here. I have like an extra stylus that, uh, that I think came with the case. I have an SD card and the one... I've got two games in here which I don't want to spoil. 
but they're two good games, but I don't want to spoil them. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> that's really all I have. I do have some game card cases, but I'm actually saving those for another video because of where they came from. So I don't want to do too much crossover, but I didn't really have any cool 3DS accessories. And I don't think it's because there wasn't any out there. I see so many people with adorable 3DSs doing like the clear case shells on them with stickers or like just customizing them in different ways. And I just, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I feel so bad. I feel like that makes me a little boring, especially in comparison to like my Switch stuff. But I have to remember at that point in time, I was really focused on just trying to get whatever games I could get with the money I had. So it's, I, I don't really have regrets of not bedazzling out my 3DS at all. I'm still really happy. It's lasted me a long time. It's great. I, I'm super, super happy that it still works perfectly well. And even though I missed out on some cool accessories, I mean, that's not the super important part about it all. But let's get into the main bulk of this video, which are the games. So I have a few stacks of games. As I said, my 3DS collection is not very big. There's only like 29 games in it, but I'm gonna also kind of tell you what games are a part of my original collection versus what games I've picked up in the past few years. Because that's another really interesting thing about my 3DS collection is like, I, bought a few 3DS games growing up and then didn't. Once the Switch came out, it was pretty obsolete for me, unfortunately. I was super into the Switch, buying that. I mean, that's why my Switch collection is what it is now. But so my 3DS collection didn't really have the chance to grow and I didn't start buying 3DS games again until I got into YouTube, which also maybe sounds a little bad that I kind of was really like, oh, I should buy some 3DS games because that's like video content. But at the same time, I don't have any regrets about the games that I bought for that purpose because it just they were games I really wanted to pick up anyways and it finally just kind of gave me that excuse of like yeah I can go buy 3DS games so so I'll be sure to say what ones are a part of my original collection and what ones I picked up more recently because I do think it's interesting to see how my collection has grown so first up we actually do have a recent pickup I believe it was in my most recent pickups Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer I haven't played this yet I obviously played the DLC for New Horizons but I picked this up because of that DLC but I haven't had the time to play this one yet. I'm very interested in it. It seems really cute. And if it has a lot of the same things that Happy Home Island Designer, I whatever the DLC is called, I can't remember. Whatever the DLC, if, if it has a lot of the same things there, then I think I'm gonna like it. Unfortunately, this copy did not come with the Amiibo card. I wish it did, but so it is, so it goes, it happens. I It was still a really clean copy when I picked it up, so I'm very happy to have it in my collection. And one of my favorite games on the 3DS, Animal Crossing New Leaf, probably my favorite Animal Crossing of all of them, I would have to say. I have put probably the most hours in New Leaf, probably, as, in comparison to New Horizons, maybe not, but Honestly, I don't even know. I'd have to check. I'd have to check, but I put a lot of time into New Leaf. So many of my friends were playing it, so I was just super into it, always going to each other's towns. The customization in New Leaf is just so, so good when it comes to all of the different things you can do to your house, all of the ordinances that you can do around your town. It just, I, I feel like New Leaf has so much charm that is unfortunately lacking in New Horizons that this game will always be utterly valuable to me. I loved my time in New Leaf. It was wonderful. So I actually got this on release day when it came out. I was so excited. I think it was, ooh, did I pick it up before or after band practice, I think? It's either I got this the day of a marching band rehearsal or the day after one of those times, but I just remember getting up really, really early to try to play as much New Leaf as I could before I had to go do something because I was so into this game when it came out. So I love this one. One of my favorites in this collection for sure. Another more recent pickup and one that is still sealed, Bravely Default. Now this is absolutely on my backlog list. This is coming up soon, I think, because I've been itching to play something on my 3DS and I, I think this is going to be next. I think this is going to be next. I'm so so excited to finally get into this series. I've heard nothing but phenomenal things and I'm just, I'm utterly pumped. I'm utterly pumped. I just, I need a good turn-based RPG right now and I think this might be it. Another one of my old collection favorites and the game that got me into this series, as I think it did a lot of people, Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, I am a big, big, big fan of this game. 
a huge fan. I had never really played any Fire Emblem games. I'd watched my older cousins play Fire Emblem, but I had never had the chance to play it myself. So when I finally had the opportunity, I asked for this for Christmas. I think this Christmas that I got Awakening, I also asked for SMT4. I didn't get that one. That was the only one I didn't get that Christmas, I think, of like the three games I asked for. But this was the more important one for me because I was like, I need to finally experience Fire Emblem. And I did, and I was obsessed with this game. I actually think between New Leaf and Awakening, Awakening might actually have the most playtime on my 3DS. I can't remember. I've played so much of this game. I, I adore Awakening. I adore the characters. Love the story. It was just the perfect, like, foundation for me to fall in love with this series. And now I'm a huge Fire Emblem fan. I need to go back and play a lot of the older games, but without Awakening, I feel like Fire Emblem very well could have been that elusive series that, like, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like, maybe I would have gotten into it at Three Houses, but I'm glad I got into it at Awakening because Awakening still has a lot of the same traditional Fire Emblem aspects, such as the Weapon Triangle, which is missing from Three Houses, and stuff like that. I feel like this is a much more traditional, whoops, <laughs> I feel like this is a much more traditional Fire Emblem experience in comparison to Three Houses. That's the main thing, in comparison to Three Houses. Um, there's still obviously a lot that's different in here, such as the, like, well, I know support conversations have always kind of been a thing, maybe not always, but for a long time, but the uh, more uh, ooey aspect of them in a lot of, in a lot of ways, not as much as uh, Fates, but still. <laughs> Speaking of Fire Emblem Fates, I actually don't have any of them physically, but I do have Conquest digitally on my 3DS. Birthright and Conquest are games that I would really, really like to have physically, ideally, it's never gonna happen because it's gonna be too expensive. I would love to have the special edition where both of them are on the cart. I, that would be awesome. And then also have Revelations. That would just be wonderful. That'd be so, so wonderful. But alas, <laughs> but alas, it's very expensive. <laughs> but I do have Fire Emblem Echo Shadows of Lentia. This is another one that I'm super excited to eventually play, probably sooner rather than later. Again, I've just, I've been in a 3DS mood recently. I want something that's easy to take around with me. That isn't my Switch. Uh, just something small that can fit in my purse. Shadows of Valencia is one that I've had my eyes on for a long time, and I've heard wonderful, wonderful things about it. So I think this may be my, it might actually be in competition with Bravely Default in order for me to play them first. Who knows? I just, I'm, I, I, I'm so excited for this game. This game was like an end of the 3DS life cycle game as well, which was very interesting because I would have thought that I would have picked it up like right away because I loved Awakening. I liked Conquest a decent amount, but I, I just missed this one for some reason. My older cousin ended up picking this one up and she wasn't too super impressed. So maybe that's why I didn't grab it, but I'm very happy I have it now because since I've heard wonderful things about it and the art in this game is gorgeous. The art in this game is super pretty. So for that alone, I'm very excited to try this out at some point in time. This is another game from my original collection that I spent a lot of time on and that is Harvest Moon 3D, The Tale of Two Towns. This game is super cute. I feel like a lot of people in the Harvest Moon community don't like this one as much. I don't remember what I ranked it in my tier list. I really had a great time with this one. I think it's super cute. I really like all of the marriage candidates. The world and the music is so cute and nice and cozy. And I love this one. The 3D aspect doesn't really make a difference. So I highly recommend if you want this game, there is a DS version of it. Don't, don't feel like you have to get the 3D because the 3D effect does not do anything other than make the trees pop a little bit. But Regardless, I am a big fan of this one. I think it's super cute. It does have its flaws, such as like the actual moving in between towns is a little meh. I don't like, for me, I never felt like there was a huge need to move towns, even though that's a whole mechanic. Maybe, I mean, maybe that was the intention of, oh, you don't have to necessarily, but like if you want it, but like, I don't know. If you're gonna have a mechanic, I feel like there's more of a reason for me to want to jump around towns a little bit but I don't know. I don't know. That would be my one gripe with it, but I do think it's super cute. Love the character designs in this one. The outfits are adorable. And yeah, so I, I'm very happy to have this one. Plus, so Harvest Moon 3D A New Beginning was one that did not impress me almost at all. I think a lot of people really enjoyed this one based on comments that I got in my Harvest Moon tier list video, but for me, I could not get into this one. I could tell I saw the writing on the wall for the Marvelous and Natsume partnership. For some reason with this game, I was like, I I think it's over. I think it's all over, which it wasn't because we ended up getting Story of Seasons and such. But I, just something about this game, 
I think because the whole point was building your own town, which I didn't want that. I wanted to have a town that had characteristics already that I could go and explore. I didn't want to have to be like, oh, well, I guess I'll put the tailor shop, buy the hairdresser. Like, I, that's not what Harvest Moon Story of Seasons is for me, really. I don't like that. If I want to do that, I'll play Animal Crossing or something like that. Or like, I don't know, My Sims or something. But for me, this one just didn't hit as hard. Um, I remember picking this one up and just being like, uh, I didn't play this one that much. I, I did not play this one much growing up. This was, I think, one of the last 3DS games I actually ended up getting. Maybe? Maybe, maybe, maybe? I think it was kind of in within that last little group, obviously before recent history. A newer purchase, but this game is completed as of this year. Kirby Planet Robobot. I adored this game so, 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 so much. I thought it was so cute, so happy, so fun. One of my favorite Kirby games, 100%. Now, the mechanics of just being Mecha Kirby are just so fun and fluid. It's a perfect pocket-sized adventure for the 3DS too, but it still feels like a complete comprehensive full-on Kirby game. It has its weird crazy twists at the end that make you go like, in a Kirby game? What? But it's just a super fun game. Lots of cool mini games in this one as well. Just overall, Planet Robobot is a great, great game and I highly recommend picking this one up. And now we get into my Pokemon collection. Now for the 3DS, I have at least one of each pair of Pokemon games except one, which we'll talk about when we get there. But first up, we are going to start with Pokemon Y. Now, I picked this one up as an anniversary present for me and my high school boyfriend. Our anniversary was the day that X and Y came out. So we were like, oh, that'd be pretty fun. And be like, I bought you X and you bought me Y or something like that. And yeah, so that's what we did. And it was, it was very strange because we didn't really play the game together all that much. Like we kind of did a little bit, but not really. It was just kind of what we did. But regardless, I have Pokemon Y because of that. And I'm so happy. I, this is not my favorite Pokemon game. Again, Pokemon tier list. You can go check that out at some point in time if you want. This was not my favorite, but I can't say I didn't enjoy X and Y. I, I really did. There were lots of good parts of it. Some of the music in X and Y is so good. Like, it's so, 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 so good, and I think that's really an underrated part of X and Y. I loved your little rollerblades. Lots of the Pokemon in this gen were, like, fun, but, like, only kind of okay-ish. I don't know. X and Y definitely has its flaws. I think it's one of the more boring Pokemon games. This is before I think they really tried to, like, redevelop the Pokemon formula, which we'll see in Sun and Moon, but with X and Y, it just, you were really kind of following the same path. The story was interesting. You had some pretty dramatic characters in there. Uh, it had Mega Evolutions, which I am very excited to see in Pokemon uh, Za, Pokemon Pizza, <laughs> ZA. I, I don't know if it's actually Za or ZA. I don't know. Very interested to return to Kalos in that game and see like how older Kalos is. Very, very excited. It'll be very cool to return to that region because I like the region itself a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. X and Y, they're fine. I'm happy. I had very good memories of playing this game, so can't complain. Now, this is another game that I super duper loved, Omega Ruby. I am a big fan of Gen 3, so when we finally got these remakes announced for the system, I was ecstatic. I think Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are great remakes. Not as good as Heart Gold and Soul Silver because they just added so much, but especially in comparison to BDSP, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire really did a lot as remakes, and I really, really enjoyed them. For me, I had only ever played Emerald, so it was kind of a different experience to really, like, just pick the one side. And I think this was another, we bought these for each other as presents. My high school boyfriend and I were both very big Pokemon fans. He's a great guy, but we were very into Pokemon <laughs> with one another. So I think we did buy each other a copy of the game. I think, I think, I think, I think. Or I at least bought him Alpha Sapphire and I maybe I picked this up myself. I don't remember. But I also, it's the Canadian version, which I think is also interesting. Um, a lot of the time in Michigan, I feel because we're a border state to Canada, I see a lot of um, Canadian copies of games. You can tell it's Canadian because it has the You Can Speak in French sticker on there. I think that's the first of any of the ones we've seen so far. I think I have a few others, but I know this one for sure. But yeah, so I am a very big fan of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. I think they were great. I loved the Delta episode. I'm glad they didn't just kind of throw Rayquaza to the side. Unfortunately, the Battle Frontier missing. 
was a little sad. <laughs> it was a little sad, but you know, I know they couldn't include every little thing, but still. But still. You also got to do Pikachu cosplay, which was pretty adorable, but yeah. Overall, Omega Ruby, pretty darn good game. On to the next deck, we have Pokemon Sun. Now, if you've known me for a while, I'm not a huge fan of Pokemon Sun and Moon. I think they tried to do a lot of cool things with it. I really, really do. I kind of, honestly, I've opened up to the idea of it not being a traditional gym challenge because of what we've gotten in recent history with, with what they've tried to do to gym challenges. I think it was interesting. I like how all of the characters in this game have a very strong personality, but overall, I just wasn't super into Pokemon Sun. I think actually Pokemon Sun was the last game I got for my 3DS before the long 3DS hiatus. I'm pretty sure because I got this for Christmas the same year that... I don't even know. I think maybe I got a big game on the Wii U this year. So I, I played Sun. I beat it. I, I played a lot of it. But afterwards, I just was like, eh, I don't really care. I don't really care anymore. And that's that was really sad. So because of that, I missed out on Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I have not picked up either of those. I'd really like to get a copy just so that way I have one of every single Pokemon game. But I, yeah, I just... I wasn't super into Pokemon Sun. Again, if you want to hear more thoughts about that, check out my Pokemon tier list video. I talk about it a lot, and I mean, I do think some of my opinions have changed since that video, but this one just wasn't my favorite. I love the Alolan Pokemon. I think there's so many cool ones that were added. Again, the characters are great. Music is great. Music is super memorable from this game because it was so distinct from every other Pokemon game, which was awesome. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. This one just did not stand out to me as much. Now we get into some Pokemon spinoffs. Uh, Pokemon Rumble Blast was an interesting pickup. I never actually had the Wii version or the Wii U version with the little the little guys. I, I wish I had those little guys because they were super adorable, the little polygonal figures. But I did have Rumble Blast and I played this game a pretty decent amount. I It wasn't anything too crazy. You're kind of just beating everybody up with your little tiny Pokemon. But, you know, I, I can't really complain. It had black and white Pokemon in it, which is always very nice. But I, yeah, I, yeah, I just didn't play this one a ton. I think I beat it. I think, maybe, possibly, I don't really remember. I think I did. But overall, it's just Pokemon Rumble. There's really not much to it. It's a good, like, if you're bored, press the button kind of game situation. And the last Pokemon game I have for the 3DS is Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. This is the only Mystery Dungeon game I have. I don't have Gates to Infinity. I would like to get that game at some point in time. Not because I've heard it's super phenomenal. Oh. Not because I've heard it's super phenomenal or anything like that. But again, just so that way I kind of have just more of them. I'd like to experience it myself. This is another Mystery Dungeon game that I didn't really play a lot of. I think I got like midway through. <laughs> I think I got midway through. Um, the really nice thing about this one is at the time it had every Pokemon that you could ever want in this game, which I think is great because for Mystery Dungeon, I like, I, I feel like a lot of the time it's very limited to your specific pool of Pokemon that's relevant to that generation, but Super Mystery Dungeon had so much going on in it from what I can remember. Could I remember the plot? No. No, but I do miss Mystery Dungeon a lot because I loved the original games. I loved the triad for the 3DS, Explorers of Darkness and all those. Speaking of which, it's getting really dark in my room. It's very rainy outside right now. So I was excited for this, but I really don't think I beat this game. I really, really, really don't. So maybe someday I'll have to go back and beat it, because I, I remember almost nothing about this game. But some games I remember everything about, we get into my Professor Layton series with Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask. Not my favorite Professor Layton game. This is actually probably my least favorite Professor Layton game, if I'm being honest. I don't like what they did to my characters. They made them too 3D, which I get it. This was the first 3D Professor Layton game, so they were like, let's make our characters 3D. But I think one of the most charming things, especially about the original trilogy, as well as the beginning of the prequel trilogy that were on the DS, I loved the 2D animation in it. I thought it was great. So the 3D animation in Miracle Masks just was not... It was a little much. It was a little much. Not only that, this is kind of when I started to realize the prequel trilogy was like getting a little crazy. <laughs> the biggest plot of this, we kind of get more into Leighton's archaeological history with himself and some friends that he grew up with. It's a really cool insight into this character who we've always just known to be this strong, intelligent, very wise guy. 
and we kind of get to learn a little bit more about him. That's what a lot of the prequel trilogy is about, is learning about Herschel Layton and who he is, what his history is, and why he became the person he is in this, like the original trilogy. But yeah, Miracle Mask was just kind of okay. It was just kind of okay. I don't really have any super memorable puzzles from Miracle Mask. I don't know. I, I want to do a whole Professor Layton video because I think it, it needs to happen. It just needs to happen. I love this series so much. It's one of my favorite video game series of all time. But yeah, I don't know. Now, now the ideas are turning. I'm gonna have to do a whole Layton video. Just Miracle Mask, not really my favorite. Now this next one is one that a lot of people also don't like. I actually had a really good time with this one, and this one made me cry. A lot of the Layton games make me cry, but this one made me cry. Professor Layton and the Azran Legacy. This is the final game of the sequel trilogy. This was also the final Professor Layton game, other than the, the next one I have that I can't remember which one came first. Uh, that came out until we got Catriel and things went sad. And the mobile game. There is also the mobile game, but still. Azran Legacy is like the grandest adventure Professor Layton, Luke, and Emmy had gone on. <laughs> and it's, you are going to so many different places. One of the biggest things about especially the early Professor Layton games is you're confined to kind of just a city or an area. In Diabolical Box, you're on a train for a huge part of the game and you have a few spots where you go off to other places, but it's very contained within locations. And as Ran Legacy, you are constantly traveling to different parts of the world to help uncover this overall huge mystery involving the Azrans, and it's it's really cool. It's really, really, really cool. While I definitely prefer more of the self-contained stories where you're just really exploring and delving into the individual areas, so that way you have a bit more focus on talking to people, I do think this was a really, really cool way to kind of have a culmination of the series at that point in time of just... You're going everywhere. You're going to so many different locations. And yeah, I, I really love this one. Lots of good puzzles in this one as well. Big twist at the end that I will not spoil. I really enjoyed Azran Legacy. I probably replayed this one, not as much as like the original trilogy, but of the sequel trilogy, this one is the one I've replayed the most. And this next game, which is a super big one, um, probably one of the most expensive games I have so long as this game is still pretty expensive. That's another video I want to do at some point in time. See, I, I've been gone for so long, now all the video ideas are just pouring back. Um, but that is Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. This was my first introduction to Phoenix Wright. And that's when I fell in love, baby! Now I'm a huge fan! <laughs> I really enjoyed this game for what it is. I know a lot of people are kind of like, nah, whatever, but I really enjoyed this game. It was interesting because I feel like the game was definitely more Professor Layton than it was Phoenix Wright. It really felt like Phoenix and Maya were just kind of like guest stars in a Professor Layton game, because even for the Phoenix Wright areas, you were very often playing as Professor Layton, if I'm remembering that correctly. <laughs> like, you were definitely lawyering it up as Herschel, which I thought was very interesting. But regardless, I really liked this game. The music in this game is awesome. It's super duper super good, and it's a, I, I consider this a very underrated soundtrack. It's very good because it has a lot of the same characteristics from Professor Layton, and also now that I know the soundtracks of Ace Attorney more, a lot of those as well. It's a great soundtrack and I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was very fun. It was very cool to put all these characters together. Seeing Maya and Luke interact especially, I loved it. I, I loved it a lot. So this is a great game. I am so fortunate to have this in my collection because I did get this when it came out and I had no idea it would ever get to the point of being as rare as it is today. So very happy I have this. Next is a game I have regrets about. The nice thing is when I got it, it was only $12, but still, and that is Paper Mario Sticker Star. This was a game that I think I was at Sam's Club and my dad was like, yeah, you can get a game. And Sticker Star was super cheap. So I was like, you know, let's do it. And I beat Sticker Star. I kind of was like, uh, it's not my favorite. As as with most of the populace, Sticker Star is not my favorite Paper Mario. I'm not a very big fan. There are good things. Wonderful, wonderful music in this game. Lots of cool saxophone solos. However, the bulk mechanic of using stickers is just pointless. It's super pointless. 
And it just, it makes me sad because they made it this whole thing, but then they had so many convoluted rules surrounding how you could use the stickers and when you could use the stickers that it was projected in such like a creative way. And then there were just too many limitations that it's like, no, the game wants you to play it in a specific way. Not only that, there was no benefit to winning battles. There is not, you, like, you could literally run away from every single battle because there was no experience. You were never gaining any experience in this game. <laughs> it's just you had to keep getting stickers. And stickers and money was abundant, so you just kept running away and losing money. There was no penalty. There was no penalty whatsoever. Um, the story, very unfortunate. This is, again, the beginning of when we started to see the lack of creativity in Paper Mario, which I hope now that with the Thousand Year Door remake and the uh, Mario & Luigi Brothership, like, we're getting back into the Mario RPGs and a lot more creativeness, so I'm really, really hoping, really, really hoping that we continue down that path. <laughs> that is my biggest hope. I want the next new Paper Mario game to be utterly creative, not like Sticker Star. I loved Origami King. I, I really enjoyed the story, but it still suffered from a lot of those same creative limitations. I don't want that. I, I want that done. <laughs> I want that done and over with. So, I, yeah, this was I kind of a regret, I guess. I'm happy to have it as a part of my larger Paper Mario collection, but not a good game. And we finally have a recent pickup. A lot of those were a part of my original collection. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor Overclocked. I have not played this game yet. I'm very happy to have it as a part of my collection because I've heard wonderful, wonderful things about the Devil Survivor series. I don't have the second one, obviously, but I'm very excited to inevitably give this a try. This is definitely one of my heaviest 3DS games. There's so many manuals in here, like the... Look at how thick this manual is. I feel like at this point in time especially, we were kind of going away from like thick manuals in 3DS games or manuals at all. So when I bought this for my friend at work <laughs> and picked it up, I was like, oh my gosh, this is heavy. This is so heavy, but it's pretty cool. I'm super excited to eventually get into this. Another more recent pickup, and for some reason the case of this is really strange, uh, but that's Story of Seasons True of Towns. I've played a little bit of this game and it's super cute. It's super duper super cute. I think it's been a while, so I kind of want to restart a file on it and start from the beginning, but this game is really cute. I, I think this is a lot of people's favorite Story of Seasons on the 3DS. I don't have the original Story of Seasons, that's one that I really want to pick up, but this one is just it's so cute. There's so much good stuff going for it. This was a return to what I wanted. And I also think this game is also quite a bit better than Tale of Two Towns. A lot of this, it, it's kind of a similar mechanic where you have multiple towns that you can go to and live in, but this one gives you three very different from one another. They're a lot more distinct in my opinion, which kind of makes the idea of wanting to move a little bit more appealing to be honest. But this game is super cute. This game is super duper super cute. So I'm excited to play more of this. This is a 3DS classic that I got well, pretty close when I got my 3DS. Super Mario 3D Land. Now, I don't like this game as much as I like 3D World. I just don't. I never have. But I did enjoy this game for what it was. I thought it was a really good early title for the 3DS. A Mario game is always going to be. I love the Tanuki leaf. I love the detail. You can kind of see it in the shadow where it's like you can see Mario turn into Tanuki Mario in his shadow. I thought that was cute. I thought that was a really cute, very minute detail, which is pretty neat. So I'm happy to have this. This would be a game that I kind of want to replay maybe a little bit, not like a full replay, but just to get back into because I don't really remember this one. And I think maybe that's why I don't like it as much as 3D World. 3D World was really memorable. I played it with friends. It was a really good time. And also there's a version of it on the Switch, but 3D Land wasn't as memorable to me, if I'm being honest, so I don't know. This is one that maybe I want to play a few levels and just, you know, reignite my memory for this game, but I am very happy to have this. I was very happy to play it when it came out. All right, into the final stag. Next, we have Super Smash Brothers 3DS. This is a recent pickup. Surprising, I know, because I feel like this is a staple with a lot of people's 3DS collections, but I didn't get this game when it came out. I opted to wait for the Wii U version because I believe this came out like fall of that year. The Wii U version came out closer to Christmas. So I was like, well, I'll just get the Wii U version for Christmas because I know I'm going to play that more. And I think that was the right decision at the time. I don't regret picking this up. I bought this from a friend really recently and he gave me a good deal on it. And I was like, you know what? I'd rather have this staple in my collection than not. So I haven't had the chance to play this game recently. I played it a lot in high school because friends would lend it to me and stuff but I haven't played this one in a while. One thing I do 
like now about this game that I didn't when it first came out was the character designs and how they had that thick line around them. I think it's really stylized and I think for the 3DS it was kind of cool. Like that was the distinction between the 3DS and the Wii U version I mean, and among other things. But like that was, I don't know, I just, that's a small detail but I like it. <laughs> so I don't know. It's hard now because I can't really play with other people on this game anymore but Ah, well, I'll play by myself, I guess. <laughs> Another reason, pick up Tales of the Abyss, my first Tales of game that I haven't played yet. I have not gotten into this at all. Maybe this will also go in with Fire Emblem Echoes and really default with my RPG that I would like to play on the 3DS sometime soon, but I'm not really sure. I don't know a lot about this series at all. I've really stayed away from a lot of my friends' videos about it because I want to be surprised. I want to form my own opinions about it. All I know is that many of my friends love the series and a lot of Tales of fans have a lot of strong opinions so I'm interested to see what's gonna happen what's gonna happen so eventually I'll get to this another reason pick up Tetris Axis I haven't played this one either I remember always seeing this one at Best Buy and when my friend offered to let me buy this from him I said sure so and not much to say about it other than I love Tetris excited to try this out excited to see the different game modes but yeah I don't really have a rush to get into this one so I'll play one. Now getting into some Zelda games. First up, I don't know why this is first up. I think I rearranged these poorly. Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. This, this game kind of saddens me a little bit. I never had the chance to fully experience this game, I don't think. My older cousins had it, and I remember the Christmas we all got it. We played it for like an hour, and then I never played it again. I have never beaten this game. I barely scratched the surface of this game. I know you can play it by yourself because you have the AI and stuff, but the whole point is to play with your friends. And now I can't really do that. So unfortunately this game is a little obsolete. I like multiplayer Zeldas. Four Swords is great, Four Swords Adventure is great, but like, yeah, I just, for some reason, Triforce Heroes didn't stick out with me. I know there's a lot of really silly dialogue in this game that I'm sad I missed, but yeah, I don't know. So this one just kind of bums me out a little bit, I think. <laughs> Next up we have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. This is the only version of Ocarina of Time that I have physically, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> it's super crazy. I didn't mind this remake so much. I still kind of prefer the original, I think? Maybe a little bit? I don't know. It's tough because I do think Ocarina of Time 3D expanded on it a lot. It had a lot of quality of life improvements. And again, Ocarina of Time is a really nice portable game to have. So I did play and beat this on the 3DS. I enjoyed it. I really, really did. Um, I, I, one of the things that I think a lot of people complain about, which I also kind of complain about, and I think it's more noticeable in Majora's Mask 3D, is how bright everything became. Like everything got super duper, super bright, which in some moments that was really cool because I was like, oh my gosh, I can actually see things. But in other times I was like, this hurts my eyes. So I mean, that's one grape that I have with it, but overall I do remember enjoying my experience with Ocarina of Time 3D. I still haven't opened Majora's Mask 3D. I remember playing a little bit on a friend's copy of it and just, I don't know, the things that I know about this game, including the swimming and the just total, like, I, they massacred the bosses, which are some of my favorite Zelda bosses of all time, to make them easier. The only one that they made interesting is my least favorite Zelda boss, with it, which is Gjorg. <laughs> so, because now there's a whole underwater portion, which I think is cool. I think that's cool. Um, but they made the swimming so bad that it doesn't even make it fun. They made the other bosses too easy. It just, it makes me sad. I'm happy to have it as a part of my collection because I think the case is cool. But it makes me sad. It makes me really sad. So I don't know if I will ever play Majora's Mask 3D. I think if I'm really wanting to play Majora's Mask, I will just play the virtual console version on my Wii, or at some point in time I'd love to actually have it for the N64 or for the GameCube, but the just in a different, not, not this version, not this version. Now, one of my favorite Zelda games, I love this game a lot, The Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds, and yes, I have the shiny holographic cover of it, because I got it uh, when it first came out. I love this game a lot. I think Link Between Worlds is so creative. There's so much that you can do with it. Again, wonderful soundtrack. I would consider Link Between Worlds underrated in comparison to a lot of other 2D Zeldas. I think more appreciation for it is coming up now that we're kind of getting 
like, we're getting Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which I'm super excited for. I'm super duper excited for that game. But I think people have really kind of been like missing 2D Zeldas. I think more people have been giving A Link Between Worlds a go just to kind of fill that 2D Zelda void. But yeah, I I love this game. I think it's so fun. It's so creative. It's a great follow-up to uh, Link to the Past. But I, yeah, I just, I, I love this game. I love this game a lot. I like that it wasn't exactly a carbon copy of Link to the Past either, that you had, rather than the Dark World, you had Low Rule, uh, you had Hilda, which was a very interesting villain. It just, it was a cool continuation with cool mechanics, cool items. I really enjoy, enjoyed this game. I really, really did. Now, another recent pickup. The, the last two are actually more recent games, so my entire original 3DS collection is done. Um, but this one is a game that should have been a part of my original collection. I loved it so much watching my friend play it. Tomodachi Life! I love this game. And I have been playing this on and off since I bought it because that's just how much I actually wanted this game and how much I love this game. This is the wackiest experience I've ever had in a video game. Maybe not the- maybe- maybe not the wackiest, but definitely a wacky experience. And I- oh my gosh, I love this game. I love this game a lot. It's so fun. It's so silly. I love making my friends into me's and seeing their daily drama. It's just awesome. I think growing up, I never thought that I would have enjoyed this game as much as I did. And maybe maybe I do get more satisfaction out of it as an adult. Because <laughs> it's not really a game I have to play play. It's just I get to witness and experience. But I love Tomodachi Life and I want another one. I think they're great. And finally, not a super exciting note to end it on, but an interesting one. Uh, Ultimate NES Remix. This is another game that I bought for my friend at work and I haven't played this one yet. I played the version on the Wii U, but I have not played the 3DS. I'm excited to see what the big difference is between this and I'm excited to see what the big difference is between this and the Nintendo World Championship. What is the main difference between these games? That's what I want to know. I haven't broken open my copy of uh, NES World Championships yet, but I'm excited to see what is the bulk difference between these two series, because they're two separate things, so I don't know. At some point in time, I'd love to dive into this, maybe after I play World Championships, but we'll see. We'll see. But there you have it. That is my entire 3DS collection. It's not very big. It's not a very big collection, but I'm really proud of how it has grown over the years because it's it's a system that I really loved a lot and I was such a supporter of this and the Wii U which again different video at some point in time but I I really lo loved the 3DS and I was so sad that I wasn't able to support the system as much as I wanted to and also I mean for my own sake collect more games for it but it's cool that as an adult I have the ability to really try to scrap up the ones that I missed out on and try to kind of make a little bit more of a collection. Unfortunately, with how expensive 3DS games are, it's not a priority for collecting for me right now. I, I know a lot of my friends have very, very large 3DS collections, but I just, I don't think that's gonna end up happening for me. I really just want to stick to collecting the games that I want to play for the system, which, I mean, that's ultimately my goal for every system, but I think, you know, especially in comparison to the Switch, I tend to buy a lot more games that I have, like, a little bit of interest in, whereas for 3DS I have to be a lot more conscious of, okay, what am I buying for the system? What do I want for the system? So I, I'm excited. I'm very excited to see how this will grow in a few years, and I'd love to make an updated video at some point in time as well, but that, that's, there we go. There we have it. <laughs> Hope you liked this video. Again, it's been a long time since I've done a collection video, so it was really nice to kind of just talk about games, hang out, chill out on a rainy day, and talk about the 3DS. It was really, really wonderful. And I mean, hey, if you liked this video, maybe consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, maybe, maybe consider subscribing. I don't know. It might be cool. It might be exciting. But thank you all so much for being patient with me too while I was on my break. Super appreciate it. I should be back to a slightly more normal schedule again. I'm not sure if this video or my other video is gonna, gonna come out first, but they'll be back to back. So it's so good to be back. It's so good to be back. But everybody, until the next one, goodbye. Boop.